Now, in the 1800s in America, there was a gold rush. That's right, a fever came over the nation based in possibilities. It was this wonderful energy that rose up across America. There's gold in them, their hills, they would say, as they drove all across the United States in wagon trains, as they came and gathered in California, and hopes and dreams of great possibilities flooded their lives. There was an immense fever that rose up in America. It was a fever that was just based in the sense of joy, of prosperity being available to them. It enabled the United States to expand and it facilitated the expansion and growth of our nation. It really helped with uh, our nation becoming more an invigorated economy and becoming just more and more expansive. You see, this joy, this fever was something quite catchy and people were catching on all across the nation. A fever, a joy that was in there. So I invite you today to join me in catching the fever of joy. That's right, catch this fever of joy, this fervency, this energy that's flowing through our world that there is things to be joyful about, happy about, and experiencing this wonderful emotion. For joy is this vibrational frequency that rises up that just makes us almost feel giddy, happy, lightheaded, you might say, that just makes us wanna dance, fills up this energy within our spirit that enables us to live on a different level that welcomes all sorts of possibilities in our lives. So I'm inviting you to get in on this spiritual rush that mines for spiritual nuggets of truth that's available to each and every one of us. No matter what's going on in this world, joy is available to us. It's ours to claim. Let's get out there and mine some joy. Let's get out there and embrace this fever of joy in this holiday season. Now today, we lit the third candle in the Advent uh, wreath here as we celebrate this wonderful season of great expectancy and anticipation. This time and season that as we draw closer to the celebration of the birth of the Christ. And so it is that this day is all focused on the theme of joy and we're inviting you to embrace that spirit within your life. You know, we find today that people will just say, wait a minute, is there really something to be joyful about? Let me tell you this, no matter where you look, you can begin to count your blessings and then that gratitude stir up that spirit of joy, things to be grateful for. And yet things yet to come are even greater there for us as we embrace this fever that floods us. Oh, I am full of joy in anticipation for what is yet to come. It's interesting that we wrap up our Christmas presents, isn't it? Do you ever wonder why people spend all the time wrapping up gifts? Why don't we just give them to them? You know why? Because we love seeing the expression of anticipation, the surprise and the joy of someone opening up a gift, don't we? We love to sit around and watch everyone open up their gifts under the tree. I know some families, they just said, it's a free for all, everyone grab your gift and go. Others will say, no, we're gonna melt this moment. And Johnny, you get one gift and let's watch you open it. See the surprise and joy. Now Susie, you get one gift and you open up and we're gonna watch the surprise and joy and on it goes as this family celebrates this wonderful spirit of surprise and joy. They're filled with this wonderful energy called the fever of joy that we catch. And we pass it around as we offer these gifts in surprise and in celebration of the joy of giving. Because let me tell you, the feelings of joy do something immense for us. They open our life, that's right, they open the heart. They open us up more and more to the sense of possibilities. Now it's really important that we understand that in this sense of opening, that we're also opening to receiving. Let me tell you this, I find more and more people in our world today have a difficult time receiving and experiencing the joy of receiving. You know, oh, don't worry, don't give to me. No, don't do that. Oh, don't go out of your way. Oh, no, 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 because I just don't, you know, I don't want to inconvenience you. I don't want to hinder you. I don't want to be responsible to reciprocate. There are all those excuses that people come up with in reasons why they don't want to open their life up to the joy of receiving. 
you don't have to. Oh, please don't do that. Oh, no, you know, we make all these excuses in our lives. And what happens is we're not good at receiving. And there is a divine flow in this world that's meant to happen, and we are called to be more conscious of it. And in that divine flow, we're called, and we need to be responsible to, the spirit of receiving, the joy of receiving, as well as the joy of giving because it is a reciprocal thing. It is a divine flow. It's going in a beautiful cycle of sowing and reaping, of giving and receiving. And it goes on and on in the world around us. What happens is so many people who say, oh, no, 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 I don't need it. I, I, no, thank you um, to anything that offers that are being made, uh, saying, you know, I have plenty. In fact, I have a dear friend who just this past week received a very thoughtful gift that was presented by someone. And they said, oh, well, thank you, but you know what? I have so many of these already. I really don't need it. And sort of cut short the spirit of generosity in that person. We don't realize that when we say no to the spirit of receiving, what happens is we're also damaging the spirit of generosity that someone has expressed. We get so focused on the gift rather than the thought behind the gift. So I'm encouraging people to stop looking at what the gift is and start embracing and feeling and uh, the joy that someone thought of me, someone remembered me, you know? So this Christmas, when you're opening up that package and it's another red sweater, <laughs> I'm going to encourage you to express the joy and the surprise of receiving and saying thank you. I also want to let you know that because someone gave you that gift, they released it. And when you give, you release it. So what you do with that gift is up to you. You could pass it on to someone else. So celebrate the thought behind the gift, whatever it may be, even if it's not something that you say, or you say, oh, this is red sweater number seven, or whatever, you know, you may think, but just celebrate the generosity and the spirit of someone's thoughtfulness in giving something and receive it. Receive it with great joy. When someone wants to do something for you that's kind, Receive it with great joy. Don't say, oh, no, 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 don't make excuses. When someone wants to buy you dinner, just say, yes, thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. I'm so grateful. When someone wants to say, can I give you a ride? Say, yes, I'll take it. And what we do in this, we begin to create this cycle of uh, wonderful blessing that flows in our lives when we become open to receiving. Now, let me tell you this. You'll never be abundant if you're not open to receiving. And we're called to the spirit of abundance. We're called that God's intention is for our lives to prosper. But if we're closed off to receiving, then we'll never ever have uh, the spirit of abundance. So I shared with my friend who received this gift and said, oh, no, 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 I've got too many. I've got so I don't need this, that, you know. I said, take the gift and know that you now have something in abundance that you can share with someone else. You know, why don't you take this gift and put it in your car? And if you don't need it, maybe when you find someone who is in need or someone who is homeless uh, uh, at the street corner in need, you might give that gift to them. Here's a chance for you to keep this flow going on and on and on. But it's not going to happen if you don't open yourself to the joy of receiving. Don't cut yourself off from this wonderful generosity flow. It's, again this consciousness that we have in life that we think, oh, wait a minute, I don't want to be, I want to be independent, self-reliant, I don't need to depend on anybody. What happens when we do that? We miss out on this wonderful connection that's happening in our world through giving and receiving. So catching the fever of joy is all about this. I am open. I am open to receiving. I'm open to receiving all the goodness of God. I'm open to receiving all kinds of blessings. I'm open to receiving the kindness and the generosity of the world around me. And I want to catch that fever of the joy of being caught up in this. Scrooge, moving from humbug to joyous celebration, we find in the story of uh, Charles Dickens. And we find this wonderful story that uh, his whole aspects of his life began to change as he began to realize the joy then of being open to sharing. So joy has all these wonderful components of receiving and giving and sharing. We find this in the story of Scrooge and suddenly his life is transformed as he becomes open 
to this wonderful energy, this life of great joy, and the beautiful prospects that it offers for him in his life. Now those early prospectors who hit California in the 1800s looking for gold, uh, their experience was filled with great joy and emotion and this feeling of success coming to their lives. Good fortune and the prospect of possessing everything that one desires was the kind of joy that they were heading out into the gold mines and heading out to the streams and heading out in areas where they thought they might mine and look for gold. This is this wonderful awareness that we need to have is that in joy, we're prospects or prospecting for possibilities. Joy opens our life. Joy does something amazing within us that's transformational. The Christmas story begins with Mary's joy, the prospect of great possibilities. As the angel tells her of what's about to happen within her life, we hear the Christmas story of the angel unfolding. Something is going to birth within you. How beautiful this is, that you will give forth a child and this wonderful gift of life extension, we might say, is so symbolic in so many different ways. And we are called to know that our story too begins with the fever of joy, this wonderful joy that floods us and fills us each and every day we can wake up to this wonderful idea something's being birthed within me today christmas as john said earlier happens every single day in our journey of our life and that's so true when we open up to the idea that i have the joy that something's birthing within me today something's unfolding within me mary then receives this good news from the angel and she ponders them in her thoughts in her mind she holds them in consciousness. Let me tell you this, this wonderful joy is something that's to be held in consciousness. Hold it in mind. I want to encourage you to wake up every day and say, on my agenda today are thoughts of joy, thoughts of happiness, thoughts of great joy and all that it brings, and the experiences of life that are so filled with joy. This is what my agenda is. Consciousness is filled with joy. I'm going to ponder these things on a regular basis. I'm going to hold in conscious the things that I want to give birth to. I'm going to be joyous about it. So what am I holding in consciousness, holding in thought, holding in mind? What am I doing? I'm holding and repeating over and over, going over and over the ideas that uh, today's a great day. God is blessing. There is wonderful uh, blessings coming my way. Prosperity is unfolding. Possibilities are unlimited. You see, when we hold this in mind, that joy fever then takes over and suddenly we're transformed because we too begin to, that which we hold in mind, discover it's produced in like kind. When you say, I'm filled with joy and today's a great day, you're going to produce that kind of joy because that's what you're thinking, holding in mind and anticipating. So I want to encourage you that this season of joy, we need to hold in consciousness the prospects and the possibilities. Just as those miners hit the minefields, they went out looking, prospecting, filled with ideas of possibilities. Let's mine some spiritual nuggets, some spiritual truth with great joy. Let's mine that and let's look for, I'm going out into this world today and I'm gonna find some nuggets of spiritual truth for my life, things that will bless me, feed me, nurture me, lift me up, encourage me, all these wonderful things and attributes. This is again, we're becoming like the prospectors. We're going out for nuggets of great joy. Hold in consciousness all kinds of things that we have a ponder to that we have the power to really ponder and hold on to these thoughts. Thoughts like, I'm so happy I've got a job. You know, did you really express that? I'm grateful, but I'm happy. I'm filled with this. I'm so happy I have a home. I'm so happy and joyous. I've got a dog, maybe two dogs, maybe five dogs in John's case, you know, <laughs> a bird and a partridge in a pear tree. I'm sure too, you know, uh, on goes the list we may say. Um, I'm so happy that someone called me. I'm so happy I have relationships. I'm so happy for family. And what we do is we ponder this. We excite and ignite this wonderful frequency of great joy within our lives. Now Mary's joy was found in the future prospect that she was going to give birth, give birth to something. 
And it would be called God with us. God Emmanuel, God with us. And this is so true when we think about what am I birthing in this world that I'm holding in mind? I want to birth something that's really named God with me, God in me, God through me, God around me at all times. You see, every Bible story is our story. So the illustration of Mary birthing something wonderful in her life, birthing that which is God within, God with us, God around us, God in us, is our story too. For we are called to see this deeper message in this story of scripture that's teaching us something about living for this moment and living in today. This is the story of joy and joy that filled her heart and her mind, a story of prospects and possibilities, desires unfolding and all these wonderful feelings of joy. How about it? Today, I wanna to give birth to something that really symbolizes God with us, that reveals God with us. So maybe I wanna give birth to some acts of kindness or generosity that demonstrate God's wonderful care for others. Maybe I wanna give birth to some acts of love that really demonstrates the nature of God, loving and caring for others in our world. Maybe I wanna give birth about the wonderful spirit of forgiveness. And I really wanted them to, a person to feel that God with us through the forgiveness that I share. On goes the list of what we can, of what we can give birth to. Now we find in this beautiful scriptural passage, this wonderful little nugget that gives us a clue. For one thing is she says, how can I give birth to something? I have not known a man. This should tell us right there that this story is very symbolic. In other words, the man symbolized the physical world. What I'm giving birth to is symbolic of something very spiritual and dyna dynamic. And we in our lives may say, wait a minute, how can I give birth to something great and wonderful? I don't have the physical means. I don't have the man. I don't have the physical means to uh, be uh, giving birth to something. Yet this scripture is teaching us very clearly, we need not depend upon a man. Yes, ladies, uh, we need not depend on a man for all kinds of things in any ways. What we're saying is that we need not depend on the physical. We need not depend upon that which we touch, see, hear, taste, etc. in the physical world. We depend upon the spiritual. And Mary was giving birth to something amazing. Emmanuel, God with us, not through the physical, but through the dynamic of opening her life to the joy of God working in her, through her, around her, and for her. How amazing this can be in our lives when we say, I don't need to be limited by my physical world at all for my joy, for my peace, for my contentment, for my uh, feelings in any way of satisfaction. I simply welcome the Spirit of God, the very presence of God working in me and flowing through me. And so I need not a man. I need not this physical world. I need not these world of limitations. I celebrate this wonderful work of God in me, happening through me. And so it is, we are then called to believe and to live and move in so many unique and special ways. And the ways of understanding that God is within us and that this is what this virgin birth is all about. This virgin birth is the awakening of the mind of man to the wonderful awareness of Christ. Christ not being a being, but Christ being awareness of the wonderful God idea, the God idea being that you are perfect. You are created in the image and likeness of God. You are in the very image of the divine. That is the Christ essence. For those who saw Jesus said, yes, you are the Christ. You're the Christ because you're revealing us to, the, uh, to this world what it means to be a son of God. You're revealing to all of us and showing us the way of what it means to be one who has embodied the very ideal of God. You're revealing to us and showing us that one that believes in the perfection of the creation of the divine. You are the revelation and the example for each and every one of us. And everything that Jesus did is an opportunity for us to do the same for he's our great example, not our great exception. 
Too many people made him the great exception and consequently said, you know, don't try this at home. Don't even bother. Don't even bother. You know, I just live my life and exonerate me and celebrate me. But you see, the very message of the scripture is that Jesus was our great example, showing us the way, the way of truth and life, the way of liberty and freedom within our lives, the way of prosperity and blessing, the way to live the eternal life that he's called us to live. He was the great example for us. So what we find is that this virgin birth is this pure thought that, ah, ah, God is the perfection. God is the all good. In God, there is no challenge. In God, there are no mistakes. In God, there are no, uh, uh, shall we say, things of, that are broken. But in God, there, as we like to think in humanity, we apply all those things. But in God, in the perfect image, the Christ consciousness is this awakening that the divine power of God is in me, through me, around me, and for me. So let's think about that for a moment because that is a pure, innocent, virginal birth. That thought alone is innocent, pure, holy, and complete, and virginal in its own. What's it, what's it like when we begin to think of God in us then? Let's just contemplate the joy of that. The powerful presence of love dwelling within that we found this wonderful source of God in us. We're waking, yes, the power of God is radiating from within. This is where Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within. Don't expect it to be somewhere else. Look within. It is the divine power, that universal presence that's at work within your life. Wow, just think about the joy. God in me. How about God through us? The love flowing through our very being. Something that we can really share. Something we can give of. Peter and John said to the lame man at the gate, beautiful, is it silver and gold? Have I none? But such as I have, give I thee. And what are they giving? They're giving the healing power of God flowing through them. That healing power of faith at work within them. They're sharing it with the world, the joy of giving. It's not something physical. It was something very powerful. It was God in them, flowing through them. How about contemplating and giving birth to the very thoughts of God around us, all around us, everywhere we go, God is. I love that thought. There's not a spot where God is not. That means God is everywhere, everywhere in this universe, everywhere you go. Everywhere, every moment God is with you will never leave you nor forsake you for that divine presence is in you, through you, and around you. And this love can be found everywhere and the joy of discovering what we feel inside is also around us and felt by others. Wow, this joy, this wonderful joy I have of God presence within me, you feel it too? You feel it too? It's all around us? Wow, can you imagine? I am perme of the I am embraced and permeated all around with this wonderful joy of the divine love. How about thinking about God always for us? Always for us. Never once is God going to say, I'm against you or I oppose you. But the very love of God is always working for our highest and best. Always working on our behalf. Always working for us in all ways. When we begin to think about these things, this ignites a fever of great joy. God is every day in me, through me, around me, and ever for me. This is the very source of joy. This is the very awakening that carries us through every experience. Now in our world today, there's a lot of challenges, a lot of disappointments, a lot of discouragement. Many people are there. Many people have found themselves just in the boat of sadness, discouragement, both because of the health reasons, what's going on in the world, the conditions around them, and just feeling like life is robbing them of their joy. Let me tell you, we need not let anything rob us of this divine joy, but to ignite this fever, 
It says there's possibilities, this fever of God within me. I am a prospector pulling out nuggets of wonderful truth, knowing that God is working through me. I'm a prospector of wonderful nuggets of truth, knowing that God is around me. And I'm a prospector of nugget truth, of knowing that God is always for me. And this ignites a great joy, no matter what's happening around me. Too often we forget we're spiritual beings having a physical experience. And we're caught up in the physical world and all that its limitations may offer us. And let me tell you, you are a spiritual being. You are a soul. That's who you really are. That's your divine essence. And that's what you're doing on this earth. Your soul is here to expand and to grow and to celebrate every moment with great joy. To let that joy elevate you, lift you to a new place to let that joy open your life up to receiving and giving, to let that joy now to take you to places where you are birthing God within you and around you. And every idea that you ponder and you contemplate now is filled with the joy of Emmanuel, God with us. And to do it in such a beautiful, virginal, pure, innocent way of saying, I know, that the Christ dwells within me, the perfect ideal of that God had in mind in the creation of humanity. I am dwelling in that presence divine. How about it? Today, are you ready to catch that fever? I hope your temperature is rising when it comes to joy. I hope you are accelerating the wonderful energy within you as you think, I've got so much to be joyful about as I celebrate this season. This is the season of joy. Amen.